Amazon revealed a new prototype delivery drone over the weekend. Jay Green is a business reporter for the Seattle Times and joins us to talk about Amazon's new drone. Uh, welcome to you, Jay. Hey, Mike. Now, what's different about the new drone? Well, first of all, it's, it, it isn't some kind of cobbled together thing that they put together to show off to 60 Minutes two years ago. It's actually a working <laughs> prototype, and it looks a lot different. Looks a lot like an airplane almost, a little bit of a more of a hybrid kind of airplane helicopter looking device. Some are saying it looks kind of like a bed. <laughs> It'd be a very small one. Uh, but sure, okay, it's a bed with a headboard and something kind of some feet at the bottom. Okay, I could see that. So this thing, uh, so in addition to the, uh, to the shape of it, which is very unusual, very squarish, in terms of how it flies and so on, how, how is this different from, the, from the, uh, the fake one we saw earlier, two years ago? Yeah, I mean, so the original one, I think it, it, was, it was more a concept. They were throwing it out there. They had done some testing and some ideas. But th this is actually, it's been two years since they, they put the idea out there. They've been working on it. They've hired a lot of big-name folks in, in the world of, of drones and aerodyna aerodynamics to, to build these suckers. Um, and, and so this one is actually a, a, a real working device. Um, you know, it can fly, according to the video, 15 miles. Um, the idea is that it would fly 400 feet above the ground. Um, so they, they, they gave a few more details about how it would work. So, Jay, okay, I love watching this video. And by the way, it's hosted uh, by uh, Jeremy Clarkson. Is that his name? He um, used Top to gear. be the star of, of Top Gear before I think he left under some difficult oh, circumstances. Oh, Lindsay, <laughs> Lindsay, how can you not know this? It's the most popular show on TV. No, See, yeah. I, do, I do know, but he, so he hosted this, but what, one of the cool things about this video, and I think the coolest thing about the video is, while it's very funny, and he's very funny, um, is showing how consumers will tell Amazon where to park the drone. How does that work? Can you describe it? Well, so that was actually interesting, and I have to concede, I don't know if that's sort of the final way it will work, but in the video... And he didn't even describe this, but in the video they showed the mother of the child who was ordering a pair of soccer cleats. They showed the mother bringing a, a placard out, maybe the size of a you know a legal sheet of paper or so, uh, with Amazon's logo on it, putting it in her backyard, and then the drone spotted it from 400 feet in the in the sky, and she said via you know her Kindle app or her Fire tablet app, it's okay to land. And the, the drone came out of the sky 400 feet down. Uh, it looks like a giant QR code on your lawn, kind yeah, of. Yeah, that's right. But, it, but it, it, you'll see, and they're showing the video now here, you'll see that after the package gets released, the, the customer then picks up the package and the, the sheet, the, the little placard with the Amazon logo, and walks away. I thought that was a really cool idea because uh, before I thought, well, how is this going to work? I mean, come on, this drone is going to, what, come up to the front porch and, and toss it onto the, you know, to hit the door or something. How does it know where to land? What's a good place to land? And this is a, a really common sense idea, which is that it would have some sort of visual recognition system to recognize the special uh, piece of cardboard that, that Amazon might send to p users of this service. And then it would just identify that, drop the package right on it and go straight up from there. And so there would be some shared uh, kind of um, responsibility for where the thing lands. If, uh, if, the, if the consumer, for example, places it in the backyard and there's a dog in that backyard and the dog gets injured, well, then, you know, why did the consumer put it there? It wasn't Amazon's decision to do that. But it, it raises another question, which is that another aspect of this video showed that, uh, and or Jeremy said, uh, that it knows where to fly. It knows when there's obstacles in the air. And they showed a hot air balloon and how it would avoid the hot air balloon. Would this have, does that imply that this, the, those two things together, the recognition of the of the square object and also the avoidance of in-air objects, does it suggest that there's uh, onboard artificial intelligence that's making decisions about navigation? Yes, I, I think it, it doesn't just suggest that. I think Amazon's actually said as much. Um, you know, the the big fear I think for many consumers or a big fear, and I didn't, not just consumers, the big fear for the general public, for Congress who's looking into this, is uh, are our skies going to be you know more dangerous with with these drones zipping around? And you know, they Amazon has developed what they call sense and avoid technology, and you know, it, it, Jeremy Clarkson in the video says you know sense and avoid technology. Senses and avoids. Um, you know, we'll see. But I think that's that's a key piece of this video is to convey that 
that idea that these things aren't just flying around willy nilly and will hit trees and birds and hot air balloons and dogs, that they actually have some onboard um, technology to prevent the sort of accidents that, that I think some folks are particularly concerned about. I, I assume that some consumers will be afraid that the drone won't be smart enough to avoid uh, problems like that. Uh, and others may be concerned that artificial intelligence drones are darkening the skies and, and <laughs> you know, making decisions on their own. Yeah, I, I think that's the big issue. And, you know, Amazon has not said anything to me specifically about this, but I've got to believe w what they are thinking is that um, they're going to have to prove it, right? So they're going to be folks who are early adopters who will love this when eventually it rolls out and they'll do it and they'll – have to prove that they aren't going to crash into dogs or or telephone wires or anything else. And if they don't, the thing will be a disaster and fail. Um, and, and, you know, and it, that is if it ever gets off the ground from the start. And I think Amazon's betting it will. And Amazon's betting that, you know, they can actually prove that these things will be safe. And, you know, obviously time will tell. Yes, it will. And I, I hope some uh, number cruncher out there, somebody who can calculate and estimate some of the costs involved, could suggest how much this might cost. Uh, I'm sure it won't be free with Amazon Prime because essentially you have your own dedicated aircraft delivering that one package. Uh, those uh, soccer cleats are going to be really, really expensive, I would guess. And it would likely be a premium service. We also don't know exactly how this would work. Is there, you know, in the video that you referenced that uh, came out two years ago, they showed the drone picking a package off the assembly line, flying right. out the, the an open door across the open field that was between the factory and the person's home and then dropping it on the lawn, uh, which suggests, okay, so they're going to be delivering it from the factory. Uh, a, probably a more uh, sensible way to do this is to have a truck full of drones to drive into a neighborhood and then have it scatter uh, in multiple directions, that would be uh, more cost effective, more awesome, and also more scary. Um, actually, I think I, I, actually I don't think that's the case. So the, in the original video and even in this new one, they show drones picking up packages at Amazon warehouses, right? Not factories, but warehouses where they store all the stuff. But what's been interesting over the last several years, Amazon's been building more and more warehouses closer and closer to cities. They used to be much more remote, but Amazon is trying to get closer and closer to customers because the one big advantage, and there may be other ones, but the one big advantage that brick and mortar stores have over Amazon is instant gratification. You go to a store, you pick up a book, a blouse, a, a, you know, a pair of shoes, and you get it instantaneously. And the thing, and that's something Amazon can't compete with. And so increasingly they're trying to put these things, you know, put their warehouses closer and closer to cities so they can get products to the vast majority of their customers faster and faster. And I'd also no, suggest the, the, the interesting thing is, you know, you, uh, Mike, you were suggesting that uh, there might be an additional cost to this. And you may be right, but Amazon is calling this prime air now, or prime, yeah, prime air now. And that would suggest to me that the delivery would be part of the prime program, not some additional new premium service. And Amazon has shown a willingness for many years to suck up losses uh, in order to expand its uh, its opportunities, its revenues. And it wouldn't surprise me at all if they offer this in limited ways initially to try and test out the service and figure out the economics, but do it in a way where the cost isn't greater for a prime customer. Now, Jay, you we, we know that Amazon hasn't said yet when this service is going to be available, but you've been following this for a long time and following Amazon very closely and obviously watching what they've done over the last two years. What's your best guess for when the first packages will be delivered to customers using this service? Yeah, you know, it's a good question. And I'll hedge a little bit because Amazon needs approval from regulators. And the second that Amazon gets approval from regulators to do this, they would. I suspect they could be up and running very, very quickly. Um, the, the the real issue, right, is is when will the FAA and Congress allow this? They seem to be. You know, initially the FAA in particular was very skeptical. Um, some members of Congress have you know started to lean on the FAA, and that they they started to change their tune some. Uh, so I could imagine after testing and after making sure that they aren't hitting dogs, they aren't hitting. Um, you know, telephone lines, they aren't getting in the way of aircraft 
uh, if Amazon can get over all of those hurdles, and not just Amazon, by the way, but other commercial uses of drones as well, if they can get over those hurdles, Amazon would be able to start this up very, very quickly, be my expectation. But I am you know, not someone who could uh, speculate about when Congress will get around to or, or the FAA will get around to approving, uh, you know, this technology, because honestly, I have no idea. That it'll probably take a lot longer than Amazon wants, that'd be my guess. And I, for one, would, uh, I, I think that Amazon delivery is already really fast and convenient. I would like to see this technology deployed for uh, making it easier for me to return stuff. Come and get it. Bring your drone over here and pick it up Ooh. off the lawn. And Smart. while you're at it, take the that. dog as well. All right. Well, Jay Green <laughs> is at seattletimes.com and on Twitter at Green with an E on the end. Jay, thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.